Hi everyone, welcome to the Car Chat Podcast. I'm Sam Moores and with us today we have Farouk Heplevent. Hello. Hi Sam, thank you for having me. Yeah, can you tell the listeners a sort of short summary of like who you are and what you do? I am the owner, founder and CEO of The Scope, a studio that is focused on automotive, CGI, film and photo production. And my background is photography. So I started uh, back 1989, to be very honest, uh, started interning with photographers and had a, um, you know, somewhat long career as an assistant up to 1999 and started, um, you know, shooting myself back then together with a partner, which was no, quite a new thing at 99 to have teams working together as uh, photographers. So we did that, did that for a while, had a blast, um, traveled a lot, so saw a lot. Uh, and yeah, being a car photographer essentially is, is, is not a bad thing because you follow the sun throughout the year, right? <laughs> so the hotspots are California, Southern Spain, Cape Town, Italy. So that's all cool. But when the family started growing, my wife essentially said, well, I didn't really want to marry a sailor that's gone six months out of the year. So, you know, I uh, started looking into other opportunities. And um, back in 2006, I would say CGI in the German car market was getting very strong, being very present. And, you know, I lost a job to CGI. That's when that basically started my that triggered my interest for CG quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> so um, then I started Scope firstly as a retouching studio for the for the photo work we were doing. And then after a while, I said, okay, I'm going to, you know, basically stay home, focus on, um, on post-production at that point, which slowly turned into actual production. So what we do is full CGI work, which is not the most elegant word word in the English language, but it <laughs> means it's everything is created in the computer. So we started out with creating sets and uh, because we learned very early in the process that we're good with locations and lighting and all these things, but could not necessarily compete with big studios because, you know, I'll, Today, there are big studios. Back then, there were big studios with two, three hundred people, very technical, direct pipelines to the manufacturers and all these things. So we said, let's focus on the creative side of things. This is where we're coming from. And when we grew the team, <clears throat> I recruited creatives, so non-technical people. I mean, technically inclined, let's yeah. say, but not trained CG people, which also was considered to be dumb, I would say, in the market back then. Yeah. Um, but in my, in my eyes, it turned, turned out quite successfully because we always approach work uh, looking at it. It's like, what do we want to achieve creatively? And how do we get technology to do that? It's a very different perspective for, to, to approach um, this type of production. And we kept developing that um, and more and more specialized on creating larger locations because the projects that we started to get booked on were getting more and more into what we call the launch. So when you have, you know, when, when they publish a car or introduce a car for the first time, um, it's obviously secret. You don't want to get it out on the street. Um, and over the last couple of years, they've moved more and more into CGI work because you don't have to actually hand build the car, send it to location, yeah. do all these things, which, you know, they would do. And I, I did that as a car photographer. We worked on those projects. So they save time. It's safer. The timelines are shorter. Um, and then we started moving into film as well, because the client said, well, photo is great, but we need photo and film, you know, it's social media, internet, all these things. So we figured out film and doing that, we learned, well, we need to build the full location. It doesn't help just to build a corner. This is what yeah. we we're doing before. And when you do it for photo, actually is a better workflow because it can be very precise and don't have to worry about what's behind you. 
Um, but when you do film, you need to be able to move around and do all these things. And when you change lights, it needs to react correctly. And the only way to get a good quality output for that is you build a full location and behave as if you're on location shooting. So this is our, you know, philosophy. This is how we approach things. Um, and launch work got, you know, we, we booked more and more launch jobs where, you know, specialize in launches and <clears throat> I'm sorry to be able to do that. You know, we need to have locations every time, you know, in the times where we're not on a launch job, we work on optimizing locations, creating locations. And when COVID hit, uh, you know, you would think that we would have been super duper busy. That's also what I thought when it started, yeah. but it turned out um, that, you know, due to delivery issues, they didn't have to advertise. They sold pretty yeah. much any car they could get on the lot, right? They're like, oh, let's save the marketing money. So it was very, you know, counterintuitive. Uh, and we used that time to build Scope City, which is, you know, I think is a great achievement that the team has put together. They created a tool that generates full CG cities that can also be, you know, re-edited, produced uh, individually, pep brand, and these things. So. Interesting. This is the short introduction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we sort of covered the, the sort of, you know, from the beginning to now. It's my experience of, I wouldn't even call it CGI, was, it's like uh, I'm a photographer and I do a little oh, bit of yeah. photoshopping and stuff like that. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I've never, I've not really done much of replacing backgrounds, like a little yeah. bit, but only very, yeah. very, very simple. Um, and starting to use a bit of AI to sort of help with some of that yeah. although yeah. it's pretty yeah. clunky um yeah. and i can see how it's interesting like how how that has developed where you go you started off presumably creating a background in one direction yeah. sort of thing yeah. um yeah. With, and and how has the software sort of changed and how has that helped you sort of transition through this well the software and this is something that was um, pretty clear to us very early on. It's we realized, well, you know, if we keep going this direction, it'll only get better, right? The software, the technology is walking towards us. If you, yeah. you know, want to look at it that way. So, um, you know, the amount of RAM that we could have, the graphic cards, everything, you know, the, the, the way that the software, the CG software manufacturers are deploying AI within the software already for a few years. They've been doing that for a few years. They, you know, they called it machine learning before AI was yeah. a thing, pretty much the same thing. Um, so we saw these developments and for example, the last six months, there was an update in NVIDIA algorithm that helps V-Ray, which is our main render engine that we're using to denoise images. Um, you know, that expedited our render times. Oh, interesting. So they're much faster. It's, it's, you know, very under the hood, but very relevant for yeah, us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sort of what yeah. could be seen as a small update note in the, in the release. And you're like, oh, yeah. wow, that's saved. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it saves like 40 to 60% render time sometimes. It's that, and that's huge, you know. And what, so what software are you using? Are you using... Are you, for the, the big stuff, are you using like gaming engines and things like that? Um, we're not. We're using Maya, V-Ray. Uh, Maya is our main tool and V-Ray as a render engine. And for the city development, we use the software called Houdini, which is an incredible piece of software, fairly complex to, to uh, operate, but it has gotten much better because a couple of years ago, the Houdini guys would actually be coding to do something, okay. right? And now they at least have notes that they can connect. You know, it's, it's, well, once you get it to work, once you get something set up in Houdini, you have the power of procedural algorithmic. So, you, you know, it's, it's very, very powerful, but it's not just clicking and it works. Yeah. You need to put it, and you know, you, plug it together. 
I know there's this like there's a separate bit of the building sort of the model and then the rendering it. Like when mm-hmm. you're most of the time you sort of almost working with like kind of like wire model type gray objects yeah. and etc. Building yeah. it all and then you decide where the light's coming from, all that sort of stuff as you are outputting it, or does it all does it literally build in 3D as you're doing it? Uh, no, well, surfaces. essentially, you, 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 you pre-build it, or for example, the car is delivered from the manufacturers, and then we prep it with our uh, materials. So they're also tuned to work with V-Ray. So okay. that is something that's developing in the market, uh, which is also very interesting. What uh, tech people, let's say, are trying to do, they created this thing called... Um, USD, unique scene description. This is something that Pixar had developed a couple of years ago for their internal use. Very simply said, they're trying to establish a PDF of 3D. Because okay. right now, the situation is Maya needs this, 3DS Max needs okay. this, Cinema needs this, Unreal needs, It's maddening. You cannot, just everybody says, oh yeah, object. just export this. It doesn't work. Um, but since there's so many more use cases now than there were a couple of years ago, especially with the actual metaverse coming, I think, everybody's trying to, you know, simplify it so more people can actually use it without going crazy. Or well, it's not in silos so much. Yeah. And there is USD, and then the next thing is material X, so that you have a material, which in essence is... The file saying this is the shine, this is the color, yeah. this is reflectivity, that works across all okay. uh, applications. Um, the game engine thing is, uh, you know, Unreal has a huge marketing power behind it. It pushes into the market, and every time we looked at it, we we're like, yeah, mm, it's. If you move into professional world, I mean, as a photographer, it's like, yeah, the iPhone 15 can you know can take great photos but yeah. Hasselblad is a Hasselblad you know so it's yeah. it, it's just um there's a different leak when you're using it professionally and um the game engine thing the oh it's fast uh, it, I don't know the speed thing is is an interesting trigger for clients mainly because faster 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 yeah you know, if you get shit faster, it doesn't get better. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know what you're saying. I guess those game I'm engines. Sorry, but can I say that? I'm, I'm yeah, that's right. <laughs> those game engines, I guess, fundamentally are designed for making stuff instantly as you're doing it, like building it instantly as you're doing it, which presumably and is interacting. Not, yeah, not really, I mean, what you're doing. Like, no. no, no, the inter- interactive side of you know. It's, Looking at it technically, you know, they're built to deliver 60, 80 frames per second. And to achieve that, they need to cut corners, right? I mean, they're, it's very yeah. smart, you know, fantastic. I mean, it's the quality that you see today is, is fantastic within a game, but it doesn't necessarily mean you can use that for image production. Yeah. Because then you're missing the mass and the this and the, the, the you know, a million things. And it's, um, and then Unreal went ahead and put what they call path traces, a better light calculation on top. And then you're as slow as all the other things. Maybe you're a bit faster, but it's, uh, yeah, totally switching to another system is not worth it in our perception. Yeah. You know? And then, so you, you've gone through this evolution of, simple photography type mm-hmm. stuff um and then now you're starting to build your own spaces which thinking about it makes sense rather than going for each project they want a street with a whatever okay let's yeah. build that from start yeah you've now built a, a city is that right mm-hmm. um yeah. that then presumably you can go give me your car model hopefully with this correct format and the materials mm-hmm. so that we can yeah. just drop it in, uh, which I imagine there is some a lot of work in the middle of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it takes a little work. But yeah, essentially, simplified, that's that's what it is. And the amazing thing, and I, you know, still being, um, looking at the world from a creative, creator point of view, um, it is 
what we call creative freedom production control. You know, the technology gives us a control. We can be in sunset for four weeks straight. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. We don't care. We or we can be in rain, or we can be at twelve. You know, high noon, uh, winter. You know, you have all these things under control, and then you can set the angle, focus on the light. So essentially, we're getting uh, to a point, um, and this is something I always was hoping to achieve: is to Point, a point and shoot, right? Mm. It is, and it the systems are getting so quick that you can move around fairly quickly. You know, the full city, no. You need to turn certain things off, yeah. but can move quickly enough to see the shot. And it shows it, it's like a Polaroid, yeah. right? It takes like 30, I mean, it's faster than Polaroid back then, but, um, and it is, you have the opportunity to go in and see and shoot. It's amazing. It's, I, it really ignites the sort of the techie person in me. Like I, I, yeah. I love photography. I love light and angles and whatever, but I also like kit and technology and computers yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. And there is definitely this gap of, I'd quite like to try that. Mm -hmm. And then you see it in film when they go, yeah. I want to make this shot. And then yeah. you see the behind the scenes of this just this yeah. crazy rigs and cameras yeah. being passed amongst people and going through windows and stuff. Yeah. Whereas on this, you can yeah. do the path of the camera, change the speeds. And I think this is, you know, it's also, um, obviously, I mean, I'm sure you had it as well. It's a lot of uh, communication about AI. And in my perception it is a little bit like going from film to digital photography um or you know retouching or not retouching because you know when i started working retouching did not digital retouching didn't exist yeah the only retouching that existed for the first guys that i worked when they were shooting eight by ten transparencies right there, there was this guy who would airbrush gradients on transparency oh wow I mean, he's like, he, he was like this crazy dude with long hair and somewhere in the basement <laughs> and I would have to go there as an assistant and he said, psst, psst. <laughs> 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 And my first boss, he was like, every time he had to have, have something retouched, he was heartbroken because it yeah. meant, you know, as a craftsman, he failed. That's how he looked at it. Yeah. Uh, so going from that to people actually using silicon graphics machines to do the first retouching. You know, mixing exposures, doing all that into full blown over retouch Photoshop hell. Yeah. HDR right. back in the day. <laughs> yeah. So it's um, technology is great when you, you need to use it wisely and always respect the craft, respect the truths. You know, it's like perspective is perspective, light is this. So don't go in and just upscale a mountain because if you feel, oh, okay, do it. You know, it's that simple. Um, and that's the interesting thing, even though we're so technical and we're using, you know, let's say cutting edge technology, it's always, we're always trying to say, oh, how can I go into this, get into this situation where I'm on location, I see it, I shoot it, I'm happy, right? Yeah. So this is, that, this is what we're trying to, and the conversations about happy accidents not happening in CG, I would say yes, but that also that has changed. The speed of technology allows me to turn the sound, turn the camera, and see it fairly quickly and say, oh, this looks like a picture. Let's try this. Let's try that. So you get in, in the flow without having to brief six people to update something, change it, and come back to you. Um, and something similar, I think, is happening in AI as well. You know, of course, we played with it. We did with it. It's great for mood boards and bouncing around ideas, especially when you work internationally and language fails you. Images yeah. always help, right? You're like, oh, what do you, you know, just point at the one you like. Uh, helps, really helps. Helps everybody. Actually, also uh, my, my team, they're like, oh, this feels good. And they know what they need to do instead of, you know, reading. Yeah copy 
I mean, I don't even know if they actually read it, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll only look at the pictures. But it's, uh, you know, because the moment you read something, the interpretation is very, very uh, different yeah. culture to culture, person to person, you know, depending where you're on the pipelines. And the pictures really do help. I believe that all the AI scare, uh, is there's, there's a point to it, but there's going to be good prompters, right? They're going, there's going to be people who can prompt well and yeah. manage it. And I see, you know, photo agents picking up prompters, let's say. Because in the end, is the client going to type it up and work? No, they're not. You know, they're going to ask somebody to do it for them, which is fine. You know, that's, that's, that's good, right? Just... Yeah, so I'm not I, so afraid of, I mean, you know, maybe I'm also ignorant, but since I went from, you know, film to digital, uh, yeah. retouching, no retouching, retouching, film to digital, social media, film. So it's the way the world works and you need to find, uh, find your place in it. But, you know, thinking creative and saying, how can I use this tool to express something that I want? But in the end, you're going to show it to humans. They need to react to it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Having that creative like connection overall is yeah. really important. I, know, I don't know whether you find this. I, I see some launches of campaigns and various mm -hmm. things and press yep. imagery that's clearly being CGI'd. Um, and sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's terrible. Sometimes you can't tell the difference. And then I'm like, you've yeah. absolutely nailed it. I know it's probably not right because the location is just a bit. I feel like that didn't exist. But other than yeah. that, you yeah. get these things, for example, you see it a lot in um, where you've got two cars. Mm -hmm. And I think this is just a, I don't know why they do this, but you might have two cars and they want to show the front and the back. So they'll both be driving down a road. And, you know, the wheels are spinning. And you're like, it's, so one of those is going backwards. <laughs> yeah, but they, they've done it in retouching as well. That's just a normal yeah, oh, picture, right? It's, yeah, like, <laughs> it's like, you know, this is one of the things where they're like, yeah, we can do it. Let's do it. Finally, then both are in focus. And like, well, yeah, because, you know, if that makes your day, do it. But it's, it's, it's not exactly, you're right. I mean, one is going backwards full speed. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> But it, it is, uh, I, I mentioned that in another conversation, and there's interesting, um, there's a cool dude that does YouTube videos that's called No No CGI, where he basically shows where they use CGI, where Christopher Nolan says no CGI in this film. It's like, yeah. He's like, okay, CGI, breakdown, breakdown, breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it, it's okay. It's, I mean, you know, I don't mind... Um, being invisible. So I was saying to, to, to somebody the other day, we're like the man in black, right? Because, you know, essentially we're successful if nobody knows that we've done it. Yeah. Look at the picture, the picture or the film does its job. And it's not about, oh, is it CGI? Is it not CGI? It's, uh, it's just a good picture, right? Because, you know, you know it when you're a photographer, if you photograph something, essentially the moment you press the shutter, select the picture, you made an edit of reality. 100%. So, so, you know, so it's authentic, real, you know, philosophically, what is it? You know, is it? Is it it's, I've, I don't know. I know um, <laughs> with the new, uh, it's funny to say a new Leica camera because the sort of techie person could go, well, they never make anything new. But they, they just released <laughs> one that um, yeah. has some like, I can't remember what the correct terminology is, but it's basically like, copyright technology built in in the sense of it huh. it verifies that what you are showing yeah is the raw image all right and, and, okay. and it will track changes to that um interesting so for me it it's not important in the slightest for what any of the stuff yeah. i do because my opinion yeah. is always i'm trying to show like a vision or sort yeah. of a, a, some stylized whatever version of yeah. whatever it is in my yeah. it's always edited like in my yeah. mind it's always edited because i've chosen to kick a can off the floor out of the way or yeah. i've shot in this direction uh, i mean if anyone's watching on people who are watching on youtube 
Yeah. Um, like it, it looks like I'm in some sort of crazy studio. Well, this thing is a pop up background, and behind there, there's loads yeah. of rubbish. So it's it's you know, it's all <laughs> exactly. edited. You, you edit reality, and I think everybody does, and it's okay. It's like, you know, not today, but you shave in the morning. Exactly. You know, you comb your hair. That, that's all fine. So it's, um, and it is especially visual communication is about what do you want the audience to feel, to see, to, you know, you try to communicate something, not document it. Even if you're documenting, and we all know that it's, there was this, I'm, uh, there was this fantastic, I think, Guardian campaign a couple of years ago, TV commercial, where they see, where they show somebody running at an older man and pushing him. Do you know that one? I don't know what I've the name is. One. So essentially it's a uh, black and white and it's, it's a skinhead type of character and he's you know running towards an old man and basically tackling him, right? And so this is the first, you're like, oh, he's attacking him. Then they pull back, show it from a different angle and you see something is dropping from the construction <laughs> site. So he's saving him. So, yeah. Right. That, that shows a very nice thing. I think that was a brilliant, brilliant TVC. Uh, you know, it was about the garden, yeah. you know, perspective matters or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, um, that, you know, again, for me, it's if you use AI, CGI, photography, painting, if you get it across, it's cool. I mean, the CGI and professional car land has very clear advantages, right? It's like you don't have to transport the car, secrecy, it is. Um, you know, essentially it's also much more sustainable because yeah. you're rendering with renewable energy, you know, everybody, most people are still, you know, doing, doing hybrid work, but I walk to the office, I'm not flying to Cape Town, I'm not flying, yeah. could say, well, yeah, three people, is that going to make a difference? I don't know, but it's, yeah. It's something, If yeah. you compare it directly, it is less, uh, you know, polluting than shooting yeah and there's the the sort of commercial world for me yeah the cgi type stuff as it gets you yeah. know as it changes and evolves and gets better it seems like the perfect solution now i do some commercial photography and yeah i don't do cgi at the moment so that is you know effectively putting me out but i'm not really doing launches and things so i don't see it just is just a different situation and yeah. maybe i'll start using it and what what not and i don't as a sort of consumer of the media i don't care like if yeah. if someone's launched a new ferrari and there's a video the only thing that annoys me is if it's really bad cgi worst competitor this is that this is also <laughs> what i keep saying my worst competitor is not the other studios actually it's still a fairly small community yeah um Worst competitor is bad CGI because, you know, once a client had a bad experience with CGI, it's really, how do you get it out of them, right? They're like, no, I tried it, it doesn't work. Yeah. You know, yeah. At, you know I was, we were in the pro, you know, we were evangelizing, let's say, for quite a while. It's like, oh, we can do this, you can do that. And then at one point I said, okay, I need to stop this because people, I can explain it to them if they want to yeah. do it. But every time I'm in a situation where I'm like, yeah, you need to prove to me that it works uh, and it's better than shooting. I'm like, if you don't need it and you would prefer to shoot, go shoot. It's yeah. fine. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not, it's, it's um, because you cannot overcome that. And with all creative work, I mean, I can, anything i can walk in and start marking it up you know from nick knight to yeah. i don't know nolan right because ah, that edit was bad yeah yeah because you know? there's always so many choices um killing creative is super easy so that's why we learned it's important to find clients that actually want to do what we're offering and then say well you know show me what you do, how you do it, how do you do it differently, what is your creative vision. But if you have to discuss whether or not what we're doing is the way to go, that doesn't work. 
Yeah. Like, it's like saying, oh, I'm a photographer. And they're like, yeah, film is kind of better. And they're like, no, <laughs> photo is better. And what are you talking Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go photo. talk to someone else then. Like, <laughs> exactly. Talk to film people. So, you, know, it's like, it's fine. you said something about um, like the creative decisions. Mm-hmm. Now, in the world of CGI, and mm-hmm. you're, I'm sure it'd be interesting to know some of the limitations that we're at at the moment and sort of what's yeah. easy and what's not, but also how do you come up with the creative because they, you can, in theory, do anything. So yeah. that, is, that is such a wide spectrum. How on earth do you sort of narrow that down? Well, we uh, for us, it's, um, and I think that's also why Cars is an interesting place to be in. It's it's like, a, it's just, the symphony is always the same. It's always Beethoven's ninth. You know, that doesn't change. Yeah. Car is the hero, travels from city to landscape, private <laughs> home to, you know, it's, yeah. It, yeah, you do, you know, Mercedes did it, but flying cars, floating cars, but. When you look at car work that is out there, it's really, you only have one, you know, you have dancing hamsters once a decade, and then you have floating Mercedes <laughs> once a decade. So it's, it's you know, outliers. Yeah. And they're not going to happen with us anyway. So you're going to pick somebody that never had anything to do yeah. with cars and let them go wild, which is also cool. I think that's important. But for what we do, you know, if you show the car, for the first time, obviously, you know, you have concepts and, and ideas, but um, the car launch per se is so special because our main clients are the head of design, the head of marketing, and CEO usually. Yeah. Because it's always such an important event. And if you, you know, you have a CEOs involved when it's an important car because they're going to be standing in front of the video yeah. or the photos. So they care. Their assistants care, right? They're like, let me see what's going on. And it is very clear it's about the car. It's, it, they're not like, oh, yeah, car is cool, but can we have some hamsters? Yeah. No, <laughs> they don't want hamsters at that stage, right? <laughs> they don't want fantastic models, uh, yeah. uh, supermodels floating through the picture. No, because first of all, they're introducing the car. Secondly, it is something that very smart, very um, uh, a, you know, talented people spent years building. Three, three and a half years is about the time they're investing to get a new car on the street that they introduce. So <clears throat> it is it, it is only about the car in the long situation. Yeah. So location, the creative, everything needs to really be strong supporting actors. And since that is a situation where you, uh, we cater to very high, you know, very alpha individuals that are used making decisions, you know, it, it just quickly, da, 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 but they're not reading the briefs either, right? They're like, they look at the picture and they say, I like it, I don't like yeah. it, I like it, I don't like it. It's, and this is how, and it, essentially this is also how it should be decided. Does it feel good? All right, cool. Let's go with it. That is very difficult to manage when you're doing a shoot because you need to get the location approved, disapproved. That approved the car needs to be sent there, you know, kept secret and all these things. And you can only show half finished work to them. The half finished work, even if they approve something half finished, they don't like it in the end. They're like, I don't like it. And if you go say, well, it's ha- you approved it. And they're like, I don't know, yeah, maybe, but I don't like it now. You need money because they can, you know, they can sign checks. Yeah. That, you know, normal projects, they don't have checks. They're like, okay, I don't like it. How much you need? And I did yeah. that. we had that right on a Mercedes launch, the assistant of Tetra back then is like, well, you know, he wants it differently. Can <laughs> you do it? I want you need that. Never heard that before. Yeah. It can happen in these circumstances. Um, so CGI gives us the production control to be able to react to it. And, you know, we can render a smaller resolution. They can look at a 
2000 pixel picture and says, okay, this feels good. And it's going to be the same in 10 K we can say, yes, of course it's 10,000 pixels. Yeah. It's going to look the same. And then they have the agency people, the creative directors, us work on the details, you know, that the highlights and the rims. Yeah, yeah. But so we can show something and deliver, show, deliver. That is very powerful. That is, and what, when you're rendering out, like you've got a car driving through a cityscape, different angles, et cetera, and sort of stuff like that. Yeah. What sort, from when you go, right, let's get the final version rendered out. What yeah. sort of timelines, like scales, is it to render something like that? <laughs> well, it is. Uh, yeah, it well, it varies obviously, yeah. like everything. But it, let's say a preview render, we we look at previous renders that render ten minutes per frame on a single machine. Okay. So that is already the quick solution for us. And if you then take it to 4K with all the layers yeah. and, you know, it's like, um, and, and, and a higher render resolution, it goes up. We try to stay between two to four hours max per frame. Per frame? Yes. And are you... In, in 4K. Are you, and are you giving a video at like 24 frames or something like that? Yeah. Or? yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, so when <laughs> you, you want to make sure it's right before you... Yeah, exactly. You want to make sure your previews are right and your render settings are good. And yeah, so there's uh, guys in the team that are specialized in doing, you know, pre-render tracks. They yeah. do a single frame. We all look at it together because once you hit the big red button, you know, we have a fairly large farm. So we have, I think we have 45 nodes, so nodes being machines okay. that, that can render in different strengths. But um, so that more recent ones manage to render so you know yeah. they render in one hour and the old yeah. machines need three hours something like that but we also use um cloud render service so okay. v-ray has their own cloud render service uh, which is very reliable which is cool and then <clears throat> you can essentially say okay i'm sending off all the shots or all the frames and then you have 400 machines rendering at the same time you want to make sure you did your settings properly before yeah. you send 400 machines <laughs> <laughs> burning through your credit card, uh, you know, in two hours. Uh, that that is fairly costly, but it's so it's available. Yeah, it's available. So if it's not, uh, you know, we'll render over the weekend, renders at night. So you yeah, we stack. But we have the option to hit, hit a big render button if we need to. Yeah, and I yeah. guess you can build, you could build your clip in 10 parts and then put it yeah, together. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's shot by shot. So yeah. essentially it's like shooting and the um, the preview stuff actually, you know, even 10 minutes sounds long, but, you know, again, we are, you know, this is what we do. And then uh, we send it off and we, collect the dailies the next morning the editor looks at it we start building the edit so compared <clears throat> to regular shoot where you need to go out and grab get everything and then edit yeah. we have the advantage of you know we do a scrap edit and say okay these are the shots we want to capture and then we start lighting and creating cameras render the previews and that you know comes together nicely so it comes there's on the website, I think there is also a few clips where you see how the shot develops. I think it's called the evolution of a shot where you see it grainy in the beginning and then you see the final quality in the Scope City on the Scope City side. Oh, you, nice. There's okay, a hang few on. samples. Yeah. Share my share my screen. It'll come up for those that Yeah, if you scroll down. There is, yeah, that's the film and larger. Obviously, when we do film, we can do photo. Yeah, these, uh, okay. if you, for example, hit the one on the left. So this is the preview, the one that you see first. And then, you know, it gets, uh, okay. we add traffic, yeah, we add yeah. people, we add light grading, do another preview. We say, okay, this is it. And then uh, uh, hit the big, big render button, right? It looks, the, the final results of this stuff yeah. now looks so good. Thank you. Like it's just, it's mental. Like it's considering what I've, you know, what you can sort of come across or even like 10 years ago, yeah. someone doing the best they can do, you're like, yeah. 
it's obviously CGI. Yeah. It's getting yeah. we're getting so much closer slash kind of there. As you're saying, this launch stuff is about the car. So it's like yeah. everything else is sort of in the background. You're not really focused on it. Um, yeah. It is very cool. And I, I love the the sort of ability to sort of craft it as you're going. Yeah, and it's, it's, it does really I, sound like an, an art. Um, yeah, the, the, the creative freedom, again, it's for me, it's um, it took a long time to get here. But it is. It's fantastic. You know, it's really, you know, let's say we're, we're done. When well, we're done with the conversation, uh, I'll go back and then, you know, we're working on a project. So I'll sit next to somebody and say, oh, let me see that shot. Well, I like it. Oh, maybe let's try the light a bit more left. And compared to going out and shooting where you have, you know, location, yeah. this, that, production is like, no, 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 you need to share this. It can be totally focused on creative. And uh, inputs, so what materials can do, what, you know, the locations that we're building, the capabilities of the render engines. And they're so good. Now is the point where it's like, okay, it's, you know, what is, how good are you, are you at your own craft, creating images, creating films, yeah. deciding, deciding colors and all these things, making creative calls. That is what it's about. Before it was like, oh, how do we get it done to be sort of work. comparable yeah. to it? But we, you know, in a way, we we are beyond that. And there was also always the promise of the game engines being so quick that people can make creative decisions faster. So problem is when it doesn't look great, it doesn't help to be quick. Yeah. 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 I, I've Preach. not really thought about <laughs> it as sort of like. <laughs> kind of like doing a shoot like when you're building the, your yeah. final output it's, it's like doing a shoot in the sense of you're yeah. like right okay we've got the location we've got the car what do you want to do with the car yeah. i can now pick where the sun is and the weather great exactly. amazing that gives me a lot more yeah. time um yeah. and just creative control but then you're yeah. like well what shot do i want okay we want a shot like this a shot like this. you know you build your shot yeah. list yeah and you create them and then yeah. you edit them all together as if you just shot them sort of normally. And what is fantastic is and that is you know, that moves us into old school Hollywood realm, let's say, because Hollywood always had enough money to say, mm, I didn't like it in the edit. Let's go back yeah. and pick up, do a pickup, right? Yeah, let's bring Brad Pitt in again and all the stuntmen. And maybe, you know, I want to shot from the left. Yeah, shut down London. Let's do it again. <laughs> yeah, so do all that. You know, it's like I didn't like what I got. So obviously for anybody outside of Hollywood big production, it was never an option. Yeah. But, you know, for us, it's like, oh, you have this something I'm like, ah, with the music, bah, wouldn't it be cool to have the camera, you know, the left pan when I edit yeah. here? Or I want the car to come in exactly here in the frame. And you're like, oh, okay, you walk to the next room. It's like, oh, Matthias, can we just do this? And boom, done. Magic. Yeah. Awesome. That is I magic. Love it. I mean, <laughs> no, but it, that's what I mean with creative freedom. It's like you, you're not, you know, you, the, the um, uh, what's the word, the, the, the restrictions, the, the um, boundaries that you have that reality imposes on you. They're kind of lifted. But as you say, I mean, I could also decide to say, oh, fantastic. I only want pink cars and teddy bears driving yeah. in it. Well, if that rocks your world, do it. You know, that's your creative vision. This is not what we do. Uh, you could go there. But since our story is written, yeah, it's cars driving this, doing that. I want to show the headlights, the room. That, that's fine. But, you know, we can... It's like, you know, we tell the variation of the same joke over and over again, and we're happy to do it. Yeah. You know? It's like, <laughs> it's always a little twist to it. Or it's like, you know, the typical, act, you know, hero story, right? Oh, here yeah, is oh, the first time, the first time it is for that car, for that group of people, for that brand at that point in time. It's the first portrait of the car that they're sharing with the world. Super important. And... And building the like Scope City, for example, mm -hmm. what sort of yeah. size of project was that? They, huge, 
Sure. Scope City is an interesting project because it's, you know, the building a full CG city usually is in, in, in the land of the ILMs, right? Industrial Light and Magic to dudes that do Star Wars okay. and, uh, you know, yeah. big Hollywood stuff. Because, you know, it takes time, needs a lot of people. It's the extreme technological challenges. Um, we always wanted to do it, but is this a project you start, you're like, oh, we need to do all <laughs> this. Big, yeah. <laughs> right? So, but when COVID hit, it, it was a good opportunity to say, okay, guys, let's do this. Because, you know, it was kind of slow and also it helped to keep everybody focused on something else than yeah. the madness that was going on. Um, and, you know, we found a lot of ways that don't work. We said, we've seen a lot of dark alleys, let's put it that way, in, <laughs> uh, in getting, getting to the solution. Uh, and yeah, you know, because essentially you need to make it look good, the textures, the modeling, the system, the technology, you know, it never stops. It's, it's, uh, if you look at it as a recipe, you're like, oh yeah, okay, you know, Everybody in our world kind of gets it. You're like, oh, you have Houdini, it's procedural, yeah, rule-based. Okay, I get that. Ah, this is how you do your textures, da, 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 da. But you know, actually plugging it together and making it work yeah. is actual, you know, finessing it uh, and making sure it does work uh, reliably, repeatedly. That is very, that was very, it took three years, three Ooh, years. Wow. And then now you can zoom into any street, any corner, any bit. I presume you've built in some funky places within it. Um, no, no, it works a bit different. It's it's more a, um, are you familiar with the back lots that in Hollywood? The, the, so essentially what the Hollywood studios have is um, they have city streets built on where, where their sound stages okay. are in Los Angeles. So, you know, this is where they shoot shows, like Seinfeld yeah. walking down the street. This is where they shoot it. And this was also a popular location for secret cars because you can have a locked set yeah. and still have a city situation. So the thinking is similar. So you have, you know, let's say our normal size is like 10 city blocks, which is already pretty large to navigate. It. Yeah. Um, and what we do is we either design streets that we feel we should have, or there is this other solution where you go into open street map data and our system can read out open street maps. So it says, oh, this is how the street, here's a curve, here's an intersection. Yeah. And these are the buildings. And depending on which city you're in, there's different information embedded in open street map. And the American cities have, you know, the building height, and these things. Yeah. So Houdini reads that information and creates a building. Oh, okay, cool. But it doesn't do a replication of the actual building because for us, it's good to have a generic city. Yeah. Because if you rebuild actual buildings and you have intellectual property things and all these things, we just want the feeling of a city, know, the yeah. feeling of LA. Uh, and we need to have the modules that can represent that city. So we could not output London right now or Paris because we don't have the input modules yeah. that represent that architecture. So it's also an ongoing project, right? So it's a more European city, but as a Chinese, you know, Asian city, uh, okay. Japanese so it's, city. It's not like you built a city. It's like you've got an evolving and it can be bits of different cities if you need yeah. it that yeah. you can add in. Interesting. Yeah. So you could, you know, keep the general infrastructure and, you know, change signage. Yeah. But when you look at a city like New York or Los Angeles, you kind of feel the difference in the city because, and this is also things that we've learned in city planning building, LA planning, they had more room. They're like, oh, let's make the lots bigger. Yeah. They have huge lots, right? <laughs> Compared to New York where everything is very tight. Yeah. And you have different rules and all these things. So uh, different materials that they're using. So you get a feel fairly quickly. And at the same time, we are looking at a city from a cars perspective. 
right? For us, you know, where the car is the most important, everything else is supporting actors. So you might not be able to, you know, do a chase on the fire escape in our yeah. city. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. built for that, yeah. right? I, I, I'm sure we can upgrade it, but it's not created yeah. to do that. There's no yeah. need at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, you can reconfigure it and, you know, in a lot of briefs for car clients, like, oh, I want a mixture of modern and old buildings. So they want to feel the texture of a city, but they don't want to say, oh, this is the actual yeah. city and recreate it. I think if you want that, it's better to go out and shoot one of or scan it, or there's different solutions yeah. for that. Yeah. And I guess if I think about most sort of launch style campaigns, as you mentioned before, it's mm -hmm. possibly, or possibly it's just a studio, that's yeah. quite easy to make um, yeah. or you've got your city environment and then the other one the classic one you see is some sort of countryside it could be mm -hmm. a beach it could be a yeah. winding mountain road is yeah. there a plan for us or have oh. you got like a set of these that you're going to work on or are you oh, we focusing do. on the city at the moment no, no the city is essentially the uh the black belt of cg locations yeah. right it's like <laughs> Uh, no, when you look at, you know, when you find some time to look at our website, it's like everything, you know, all the images are full CG. So it's private homes, landscapes, yeah. deserts. That's all, that's all we do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. No, it's, it's, um, it's cool. The, in terms of what you can do now, mm -hmm. are there some technical constraints that you're like, oh, I'd really like to be able to do that, but either it takes too long or just the technology is not quite there what, and what would you like to see sort of improve? Yeah, I mean, it's like last year we've seen the cloud system from V-Ray. That was a huge game changer because before uh, clouds were images and now they're actually simulated okay. clouds and interact with the landscape. It is fantastic. But that was like, for me, the last missing part for creative freedom. Uh, what I would love to see is... And, we're seeing developments in that direction. What you have, game technology. So the real-time technology that is available for us when we create cameras, right? Right now, we're looking at gray shade and we send it off to render. So there's a little gap. Yeah. Um, but we're actually working with, with, with the innovation department of the guys that built V-Ray, which is, they're called Chaos. The company is called Chaos and V-Ray is one of their software tools. And they're developing that, which is super exciting so that it will be even more real time and seamless yeah. and in it. And we have, I have not ordered one of the Apple Vision thingies yeah, there, yeah, yeah. but it, that might be fantastic if it works where you're like you and your client, uh, you're on set and you're like, oh, <laughs> let's turn the sun and I like it and they put the camera there, right? So to, to be able to do something like that, um, I think that's going to be possible. Um, at much more, I mean, obviously the tech fun of it sounds exciting, but if it really helps to create faster and faster usually means we have more time to create better quality yeah because every time you have like a technological advance you have like three six months and then everybody's like oh you can do that so i'm going to cut the time right? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um but interestingly also with what we are experiencing so you're like, oh, now it's fast. So, okay, then you save time, save time. And then you realize, well, actually, I need to think about what I want to do before. Because just doing it because I can do it quicker doesn't mean I'm going to get a good result. Yeah. And it, it, similar to digital photography, right? Shoot, 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 shoot. But if you're not thinking about what you're doing, it's just random. So um, even with AI, you do layouts, you test things, but somebody needs to say, ah, this is what I like. And the reason I like it is because work with the brand is good for the guy. I mean, yeah. whatever the reason is, if you're trying to, uh, let's say, put pictures in a blog post about, I don't know, updating your work documents, 
fun. You know, then also it, it's cool, right? Yeah. Make a nice visual, everybody happy. It's cool. Right. Yeah, that is but if that is an interesting point, because I've definitely had that with software and, and working with video. I do some work yeah. with video now. And it computers never seem to quite get ahead of the camera technology in the sense that the resolutions yeah. have gone up and up and up and up. And what you kind of want to do and demand yeah. on stable, whatever it is, yeah. means that your your computer's always like working really hard. So it always yeah. takes longer than you kind of want yeah. to do the task. So you actually, as you say, you have time to think about it because it's taking time to do it. Um, I have this with some audio processing and stuff now. It just takes ages for editing these yeah. podcasts at some level. It can take like 20 yeah. minutes or something, which yeah. Yeah. in your world is probably not that long, but it is set it and then you yeah. kind of got to go do something else. Um, it, as soon as that gets ahead, that just it needs to be one notch ahead of yeah. your brain. Then you're like, oh, I'm slowing this down. And also, <laughs> all there's just, it, you then, then there's no lag. There's no delay in the system because you're like, oh, I want to yeah. do this. Yeah, but with technology also, and uh, it's a very famous saying um, with with CG people is like, you know, renders always take the same time. You know, <laughs> yeah, we use the same time for rendering that we did eight years ago. Yeah, we're just putting less stuff in the scene. Yeah, we're just doing it like, oh, I can do that. And so let's say if you're used to four hours render time. You punch stuff in there until you're at four hours. You're always, you know, going to yeah, the limit. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you're just taking a picture of a car in a studio, yes, you know, it's like, you know, that's going to render in 50 minutes these days. And it took a night when we started. Uh, but, you know, the, the tasks are also evolving. And then is the, let's say you're, you're putting more in the scene. No. Is it now the software? The environment, well, I presume your environments are built, but then are you still adding in lots of stuff to make it the sort of, you know, it can be 8K and there's a little can on the sidewalk or whatever. Are you still going mm -hmm. into that detail, sort of cr spending a lot of time on the extra stuff? Bec yeah, but because, but it's, it's the same thing that you would do when you're shooting, uh, you know, commercially, not documentary, but. Yeah. You know, so is that, you know, you go on, on set, you look at the shot and you're like, oh, I could use a fill here. How about I need something in the foreground, get me a tree, yeah. you know, whatever you would do on set as well. And when it's film, the camera's moving, gets more complex. Again, our advantage is we have a stable simulation so I can, you know, do 25 cameras on the same drive and do do a preview and say, oh, I like this one. Yeah. Let's go high risk with this one. Uh, and, and discuss it with the team also. It's not um, just a pure single person's decision, which I think makes makes uh, makes the quality better yeah. as well. If, if yeah. someone wants to sort of, I know this is like we're at this end, but the sort of top end, but if, if someone wants mm -hmm. to sort of, let's say myself, yeah. get into maybe doing some CG backgrounds and then inserting cars I've already shot or I don't know whether you can get models of cars that easily yeah. um, these days, but where do you yeah. start and what software is quite good? Well, I think um, hope, what we, we are using a software for creating materials and textures that is called Substance. Mm-hmm. And they, they're part of Adobe yep. now for a few years. A, a fantastic piece of software. And they have, I think, something they call Stager, where you could render. We don't okay. use it. I, so I couldn't say I used yeah, yeah, it yeah. and it works. But um, I would suggest that. And what we, we're, so we are on a Maya V-Ray pipeline. Maya is, is not a fun tool to learn. Yeah. So I would not do that um i think yeah i mean what what the guys like is blender yeah because blender is for free huge community uh lots of resources for free and also lots of uh plugins and things okay it's interesting for us but it's like you know again in a 
let's say, semi-industrial production pipeline. Do you need other things? It's like game PCs yeah. and HPs. And as you look at the numbers, you're like, why well, is it twice as expensive? But you know, the HP machines that we have, some of them are running for eight years straight without never okay. been turned off. Yeah. Never. Eight years, right? <laughs> Boom. And, uh, we have some experimental stuff and it's like the game PCs are much stronger. After three, four years, they're dead because we're you know using them yeah, in an yeah, industrial yeah. scale. Um, <clears throat> but Blender is definitely absolutely worth looking at, and you uh, you know you can get car models. Um, Turbo Squid is is a is a pretty pretty known uh, like you know actually they they've been bought by Getty, oh, right? Really? So it's the Getty of three D. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they have a lot of models. And they have, if I'm not mistaken, with Ford, they actually have proper licensing. So, oh, nice. you know, you're, you're just safe. But there's good car models there. Um, yeah. Again, Blender and the Blender, the render engine that Blender has built in called Cycles, extremely powerful, reliable. So I would suggest to take a look Might at that. Play. Um, just hmm? see, just yeah, come yeah. up with, have, yeah. have, see what's what. Um, yeah, yeah. How, how do you think it has it sort of changed marketing and stuff in the automotive industry? I guess a lot more people are doing yeah. it, but well, it is. Um, you know, it took longer than I expected. I hoped, let's say, yeah, um, yeah, 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 because people are people are slower uh, in, in adapting new workflows. But and interestingly, the creatives have not embarrassed it again, embraced, embraced it. it as much uh, as as we've done. Uh, now there is a stronger push from the client side because there is, you know, it's for MBA person, it's very obvious. Okay, just faster, cost less, no transport. Less. Yeah. Why are we not doing this? Yeah. Right. I mean, that's the question. <laughs> um, and it's going to happen more and more. It happens a lot in, uh, you know, the configurators, obviously, yeah, the catalogs. Yeah. The, you know, many manufacturers stopped printing catalogs a couple of years ago. Um, so it's coming with most new tech. It's getting introduced where you can see the financial efficiency the easiest and where the incumbents push back the least. Yeah. Because nobody's like, oh, yeah, I want to spend 120 days in a white studio, except the photographer that's making money. Yeah. But, you know, so there's no creative saying, oh, let's fight for the studio <laughs> shoot uh, in, on, in front of a white psych, you know, get the car and do this. I mean, obviously, it's shit for the people who are losing that business, but that has been ongoing for quite yeah. a while. Um, so, you know, everything, so it starts from the simpler tasks and goes to the more complex, or you have the super high end like Hollywood, where you do things that you could not do before. Um, but with the <clears throat> appearance of AI in our lives last year, that was very interesting. CGI now is the good old technology. <laughs> very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Reliable. So, <laughs> exactly. Before that, it was like, oh, CGI, I don't know. You know, why don't we go out and shoot? Now everybody's like, oh, it's not AI, it's CGI. Okay, I know CGI and it's not the crazy stuff. So it's very interesting uh, that the AI hype actually is making it more acceptable, I guess. Uh, yeah. Acceptable. Yeah. Thank you. Acceptable for, the, for, for some people to say, okay, let's do CGI because at least there is craft or it's similar to what I know and it's, it's not just. Uh, that everything is black magic. Yeah. You know? I'm seeing more <laughs> just on my own sort of personal Instagram. Um, mm -hmm. And I wonder if other people, this is happening. I, I see more people I would call sort of digital artists, um, yeah. maybe in the car space, who are uh, taking, building a model of a car and then changing it, you know, customizing a 911 into some yeah. crazy Dakar thing. Um, yeah. Kaiser is quite a famous one. Um, and then you'll yeah. see he's built a, an environment, dropped it in, take some photos, made a video or whatever. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's becoming more, I think that's becoming more widely seen. It must be. Um, and people mm -hmm. are going, oh, that looks quite cool. 
Yeah, but also there, because the technology is, is getting faster, it's easier for them. I, you know, maybe, I don't know how he builds the environments, but he could go to Kitbash 3D, get elements there, upgrade mm. them, put it together. So everything, when we started out a couple of years ago, um, you know, you need, you had to be able to do everything. So you'd had yeah. to create a tree and the street and check in the car. And, you know, so everything had to be in-house, which was a big, big task. And the, um, you know, the technology and, and the industry developing means I can go out and there is a store that has fantastic trees. And those guys have, what do you call it, botanician, uh, you know, plant dudes, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you call them? What's the right word? Uh, I, I, I can't German, think of it right now. But yeah, specialists so, in the you know, plant. Tree dudes, right? <laughs> so they, they know trees or something. <laughs> exactly. So they, they're in the team, so they build trees. That's all they yeah. do. And they're like, oh, this is fall and this is spring and this is the leaves are like this and this is blah, 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 yeah. blah. So it has the uh, has adapt to it. And you're like, oh, I'll... I like this tree, but then you're like, you can trust the asset that you're using or, you know, a car yeah. or a table. So the moment these inputs become available, available easier, obviously you can focus on light camera yeah. and things you're good at. And this is what we're seeing in the industry. And in I think the industry is growing because of games becoming more photorealistic at the same time. You know, the VR thing, I'm not sure. But, you know, I see more websites, e-commerce, where you can turn your yeah. sneakers. Uh, you know, these things are happening and becoming easier. It's, it's So the three-dimensional internet experience, maybe not in the goggles, but, you know, I don't mind turning around a sneaker to yeah. see what, a, you know, so everybody. So it's like what everybody would want is going to happen, not what we tech dudes want, right? Yeah. It's to be more useful than, oh, this looks cool. Yeah. <laughs> and from the. It needs to help sell stuff. Cause they, yeah, consumers, they just go, I like it or I don't like it. Or yeah. that's better. Never, they never know what yeah. they want until they see it and then they go, oh, I like right. that. Yeah. From um, yeah. your customer's point of view, is there anything you see them sort of asking for that is like, I don't know, different or pushing it a bit? Or what do you get? What's their sort of progression being yeah the customer so it's it's also there's you know it, there is like trends and there's but there's always been trends as in car photography or yeah. car imagery so you're like oh we need people in the picture right or in the film and then you're like no 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 we want to focus on design and then so you know there's like it, it flows yeah, yeah, and yeah. the whole market does the same dance I, i'm not sure if you follow the car commercial world but the last three, four, five years is cars and there's somebody standing in front of the car. Always. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but that's new because before it's like cars and little, very small people next to it. And you'll see what the, um, sometimes you see, you know, less strong brands have this car, small people next to it. Yeah. And then the more progressive ones are with people in front. Yeah. And now, which I prefer the cool people have, okay, here's a cool car shot and here's a cool portrait shot. And let's solve it in layout. Let's not try to squeeze yeah, everything yeah. into it. It's like, you know, no, I'm not going to have sausage with my cereals. Thank <laughs> you. No, it doesn't work. I mean, yeah, it's because something is going to win. And, and this is, but it's humans, right? It's like when you put a person into a car image, in any image, and the person can be super, super small. We are humans. We're looking at humans. Yeah. We're trying to figure out who this human is, what this human is doing, and is this human my friend or my enemy? This is basically what yeah. happens in your subconscious mind all the time. So it's as a marketer, do you really want to put people in there? Yeah. And if when you put people, just be aware, it's basically the way this model, this talent, this act, that's why celebrities work because they have a brand. <laughs> Like if you just have a talent or photo model, so this is the person that your car is going to be connected yeah. in the consumer's minds for the rest 
of eternity ish. And you're like, oh no, I'm not a blonde woman in about <laughs> yeah, 25. Yeah, yeah. I cannot drive this car. If if it's so clear this is your customer, then do it. But you know, I'm like, well, tracksuit me, not so much. You know, maybe yeah, it's not yeah, the right yeah. car for me. Yeah, <laughs> when you see those images, you go. I think most people go, "Am I the person in that in that image? Do I want exactly. to be that person? Do I want to be friends yeah. with that person? All that sort of stuff." Yeah. I, yeah. in car movie, car imagery, I love a bit of like slightly blurry people, a bit yeah. of like moving through, you know, there's people yeah, yeah. you can't really yeah. necessarily see. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's like the people supporting the hand, or even the hand, you know, it's like, it's, it's very, you know, what, yeah. what are you saying? You're saying something with it because if you don't want to say something, why is it in the picture? And it is very tricky. I, I yeah. as you say, you're always going to exclude someone by yeah. making a decision but did you see did you see um there are i, I posted it on linkedin but there's like a um, very cool young polish studio that posted something with uh where they built a stable diffusion pipeline where they essentially um you go in you just mask the person tell AI just to work on, on the head, the yeah. face, whatever. And it, you know, obviously since it's so focused, it can do it pretty quickly. And they put 3d people, they render 3d people and just upgrade them. So you have the picture, you just up res them, but you could essentially do that with, you know, change ethnicities. So yeah, each you could person can see a different individualize. Hmm? Yep. And this is what the marketers want. And they could do it. I think they're building systems that can do it. It depends on the regulation, yeah. right? So in the States, you'll be able to do different things than in, in Europe. But essentially, this is what uh, marketers are trying to do, hyper-personalize. Uh, and then the people stuff obviously becomes more relevant again. That said, you know, uh, from, from a sociological, societal point of view the bubble is getting worse then, right? i mean if you, all you see is yeah reflections of yourself no. i don't know yeah, you walk past a shop yeah. and in the window you are wearing yeah. the glasses you know that's yeah. the sort of stuff if you take it yeah. to the and that is like you know maybe i don't want to say I mean, maybe i want to have yeah i want someone else role model <laughs> <laughs> i want it to be aspirational you know? I, exactly. So, where's the aspirational aspect of it? If it's just me skinnier, I might also be pretty angry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it brings up a lot of questions and things around that. I, I, I think there is a lot in, well, that we know there is a lot in someone making a decision. Yeah. yeah. And that is the decision. And it might yeah. be right. It might be wrong. It might not be right for everyone. But, like, yeah. It might work very well. Well, yeah, it's, 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 um, but you know, in car photography and talent in car photography, film in film, obviously you need people, but it's, um, you know, the area that we are, we are in, it's, uh, also the advantage. We don't have to necessarily do the talent uh, yeah. thing because at that point when it's launched everybody's like no no it's fine we show the car yeah just just Close. show the car <laughs> show the car normally yeah, some yeah, weird yeah. wide angle shot too close in a studio <laughs> yeah yeah well that type of stuff, All yeah. that fun but stuff. it's uh yeah it's crazy right it's like so many cars on the market and actually very professional markets you still see stuff that's like oh who did that <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you, and you see it a lot. Like, kind of, I think the, the good to... stuff stands out to me when it's been done well. Yeah, whether yeah. it's cool use of colors, whatever, whatever it is, when it's done well, yeah. it. I'm slightly, I'm not shocked, but I. It stands out. Whereas most of the time, interesting, isn't a it? A lot of stuff yeah. I see is like average, and I know yeah. that a lot of money has been spent. So yeah. I feel it, it must have been because. None of this is cheap. Doesn't matter how you try and yeah. do it. So yeah. it's gone through a few people, a few professionals, before it's got to the end. Yeah, but that's 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 a bug and a feature because you know if it in in our experience, so there you have about the layer cake. We call it is about seven people. 
Okay. Right. Yeah. So you have art director, creative director, you have accounts, then you have marketing point person one, CMO, and then car designers. Yeah. So CEO. And obviously the danger of um, groupthink and oh, let's agree, let's find something in the middle is very given. Yeah. In our experience, the only one of the solutions to overcome that is to create a preview image that is very strong, makes a statement, and that gets you top. know carried up because the top people can say, I like it, I don't like it. Yeah. Because if you have something where like, yeah, this is it, but you need to think about this and decide that, they will not take it upstairs. Yeah. They're like, oh, it's not finished enough. I cannot show it. So you just end up, you know, running around, running in circles until, you know, whoever does has the final cut or the final decision gets to see it. Then they might say, oh, it's so bright, it's so dark, whatever. And then it gets salvaged, yeah. right? And it's like, oh, okay, at least this is the safe solution. And this, this, this is the reason why a lot of stuff is mediocre. Yeah. It just gets slightly yeah. watered down at each, yeah. each level. Yeah, and it obviously, I mean, imagine you're in marketing and a launch is just one of the projects you're working on, right? You're not going to risk your career for it. It's just one. Yeah, you're like, is it good enough? Work. Is it good enough? <laughs> yeah, Next. no, also you just want to make sure whoever decide, decides it and if it's, yeah. it, you know, it's a, it would be a lot to ask um, somebody in marketing to stick out their neck for it. You know? Yeah even though it's very important for the brand, if the top people do not take over the project and do it directly, the, the normal uh, people will be very, very cautious, especially when the big people are involved. They're like, they just want to be super safe. Yeah. And that's why it gets, you know, kind of boring because it's safe. Yeah. And they then might you go, be, well, you came to us. Be, and we think this, yeah. we think this is... This is what you want. This is what you're paying for. Or you, yeah. we think you are. And then they're like, yeah, but I kind of like this. And I kind of like it. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but it's, uh, that's why, I mean, for us, we do four to five launches a year. So not too many. Yeah. And when we do them, they're very intense. So, you know, we try to uh, get a good understanding of our potential clients and partners uh, and to, to also sometimes say we might not be the right people for you because this is the way we work and if you are not comfortable with that it's not gonna yeah not gonna work it's not gonna be a good relationship That's simply yeah, yeah well how and how long does i'm sure it, it, you know it varies massively but, but from someone coming yeah. to you and saying hey we've got this car yeah we want to launch it Obviously, they do. They know a, a, a while ahead. But how long from yeah, you getting do. getting your first bunch of files and going? We know we need this type of scene. To here's a 4K video. So it's also interesting. They know they're going to launch the car. Doesn't necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <know? laughs> Doesn't mean they uh, tell lead, you. Lead to the reactions. Oh, let's do this on time. So, um, we can, the you know, normal package that we deliver is like 30 seconds to a minute video, yeah. depending and ah, six to 15 visuals, stilts, the details, interiors, yeah. beauty shots, depending the fastest that we can do. And we do is eight weeks, which is okay. pure madness. From the call to here's your 4K video. But also those are intense four weeks, uh, eight weeks. And this is you know, what I was saying. This is why we are looking very closely at the people we're working with because I need access to the decision makers yeah. in that short time frame. We can write a timeline, but it's going to change. So it's more that we say, okay, we need at least two check-ins per week with whoever is right making person, the call yeah. and you need to, it's like, we're a bit more like doctors, right? You pretty much have to do what we say, otherwise you're going to die. <laughs> so it's not, but yeah. <laughs> it'll take longer. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not going to work. Yeah. Right. It's like, so that's also very interesting that, um, 
you know, being a specialist in this very specific area it, it is important. It's, I mean, for me as a photographer, for example, wedding photography, I always thought it's incredibly stressful. I, mean, I couldn't have done it. I couldn't have, I was like, oh, I messed up these yeah, people's done. <laughs> memories, right? It's like, I think that's, I don't know, if, uh, I would feel the pressure. Yeah. I'm sure they, you know, wedding photographers do. But, you know, so if you have a good wedding photographer, it's like, yeah, it's going to cost you twice as much, but this is what I do. And you're like, okay, where do I sign? Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> and um, I think in a way it's, it's similar. So if we have clients that are like, well, no, it, this is the way it needs to go. You know, we might, we do pass on, on projects where we feel we cannot deliver successfully. Um, yeah. Because it's too, you know, it's, the stakes are too high. The stress level is too high. Um, you have no time to play games, politics, set it out and wait. It's just all not optional, you know. Um, so, but yeah, eight weeks. Ideally, we, you know, we said, well, 12 weeks would be better. Yeah. And it depends on the quality of the data. But also the data keeps evolving throughout the job. So we have, you know, we have two work streams where one team is basically just preparing the data and we get like a quick preview model so we can start going into picture with mm. it. And then they keep updating the model with the product okay. specialist. So it, they don't, so we don't have to take product feedback in the picture. Yeah. Right. Because that keeps evolving. And we say, no, no, we have this thing called spec check. So they do rent a specific set of renders they always do the same renders it's like you know standardized and then um, product people say oh no the headlight is wrong the rim is different whatever yeah. so we update it send it again so it's like just happens in a different ideally towards the end before we hit the big render yeah. button it needs to be done right <laughs> but it gives us a bit more time um and is that to, because to, to work on stuff they have not built their model uh, or it's yeah, just things it's, change over time. Things change. And then, you know, it's when you look under the hood, it's fairly complex, right? You have lots of different materials, material assignments. Car paint is a universe for itself. Uh, chrome is a universe. So, you know, with all these things, when you go in into detail, you have different chrome types for different manufacturers leather yeah. you know if you do interior it's a whole different ball game um so it they need to see it the product people need to see it we need to see real samples and especially with launch cars or prototypes sometimes they tend to do more interesting stuff so they might introduce a leather color that is yeah. super cool and they'll maybe never actually publish it like that but you know they have this shade of yeah. blue that specials that try to hit that and synchronizing all that information is is uh, is a lot of work yeah, yeah yeah although you would think oh it's technical it should be easy it's not and then i guess with those sorts of things your lighting yeah in the scene makes such a difference yeah. of how it's going to look and they'll be like, well, it doesn't look like I remember when I, I did a tour of um, Red Bull. Yeah. And they were saying they had something like five different versions of each of the car colors. So yeah. that depending on where the race is, you always yeah. see the same color car. Yeah. Well, yeah. And you're Smart. Like, yeah. What? Absolutely. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I guess if it's under like neon lights, it's going to be yeah. different to if it's in a sunny desert evening that's interesting i wasn't aware that they counterbalance the the actual light situations so yeah, they get a good they do because yeah, they want smart you know they're i can't imagine f1's quite you know they're spending a lot of money i guess they're like we yeah. want our brand to look we don't want yeah. it to look orange or something it has yeah, to look yeah. red but I was like, that is quite interesting like i didn't know that yeah but it actually you're right it does that but we try to um so we said we, we we don't balance the color to the environment. So, because we, you know, you calibrate the color in the spec check. You say, okay, this is the blue. Yeah. We can pick, color pick it. It's in the white studio with gray shade. You know, yeah. you have charts and everything. Calibrate. 
Then we say, okay, now this is in a sunset situation, so this is what it looks like in sunset in a correct exposure. If you want us to push to blue, we do that in retouch. Yeah. We don't change the material because you need certain, you know, yeah. safe things, right? But obviously, we can always, you know, change change the color and, and retouching, and we do, right? If you have RGB and CMYK and all these things, uh, you need to adapt. It. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then I guess that final bit is the sort of artistic finishing yeah. on the the hard stuff you've got the raw data correct yeah. and then yeah. it, it works on from there that's, that's exactly. it's quite interesting i, I don't know i hope I don't know the automotive <laughs> enthusiasts listening are interested <laughs> so, <laughs> I hope so if you've made it to here you must have done um <laughs> yeah. i normally wrap these up with five five car questions i know you're oh, big yeah, in design but you've worked with cars for a long time so i'm sure you have some some opinions uh yeah. do you have a most memorable driving trip or journey Oh, I did uh, cross country from Las Vegas to New York. I have to, before I started working as a, as a photographer myself, yeah. I with two friends, we bought a Cadillac Eldorado in Las Vegas of a Swiss guy and drove cross country to New York and had everything. Car broke down, <laughs> had to be repaired. Roof wouldn't close. It was a convertible. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was it was light blue metallic and white seats. So that, that, that's a very memorable yeah, car yeah, yeah. Uh, experience. Uh, <laughs> and were you taking lots of photos of it at the time in the various settings? Uh, I have some, but not so many. Yeah. It was film. Yeah, yeah. Shooting out film. <laughs> <laughs> things, things have changed. Um, uh, yeah. If you could only drive one sports car for the rest mm. of your life, what would it be? I would have to start driving sports cars. But <laughs> <I'm> a... <laughs> okay, well, if you would only drive one car, what uh, would be your one car? Uh, well, no, it's I would. I, I like as a sports car. I like Jaguar F Type. Oh yeah, nice. I, I like that one. Nice design. Don't have it. Nice car. But I like it. Uh, this would be a, a. We'll see how this one. Did you? What's the most undervalued car at the moment that you can think of? Are you like attuned with this in any way? Uh, undervalued as far as what you can uh, uh, like when you buy a buy price it for or possibly oh, you, could, no you could take a design spin on it and go i think this looks cool and most people don't uh, i think other people like it as well but there's like this uh, s-class coupe from the 80s and i couldn't give you the name mm. i'm not so good with names i think that's pretty cool but uh as far as real money and cars i'm totally yeah yeah, yeah. I, I don't bike. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Uh, yeah. are there, are there any, is there any interesting um, any interesting cars that you're looking at, or any technologies that you find interesting, uh, whether it's EVs or anything like that? Well, I, uh, me personally, I would hope that uh, uh, hydrogen stuff actually pans out because. In a way, I think that might be a better solution. I, I understand that um, efficiency doesn't pan out yet, but you know, also I read up, I read yeah. about it. So what the batteries are doing is not so sexy, right? So it's like you know that is that is an unsolved um, challenge. Um, but I think you know, in general. I'm living in a city, and I I, I really enjoy the you know the the, the hourly rental yeah. solutions, and also you know in Paris. I'm not sure how it's in London, but I, we did something for Renault. They're bringing you know they're putting something like that on. I think that's a good thing instead of people just putting their cars everywhere. Yeah, I, I've 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 spoken to uh, one person who was um, uh, Link yeah. and Co, which is like an app membership yeah. type platform. Well. Um, the guy who is the founder of that. Uh, and then we have various zip car type things in London. You know, you yeah, can rent one. Yeah, There's yeah. actually one on our street you can use. Um, yeah. I don't use it very often, but I've got friends that use it quite a lot um, yeah. for getting around a city. And I've got a friend who lives yeah. in Stuttgart who uses them all the time, I think. Um, yeah. It's actually quite, a, I think it's quite a liberating experience. It is, and it is having to deal with your parked car and 
Exactly. And then also in you know, choosing a car. So it's, with those, I mean, we also have a service called Miles. They have larger, like little, you know, little buses yeah. and stuff. So <clears throat> because you need a large car, I mean, I have four kids, right? The oldest one is 19 yeah. now. So, but, you know, for a while I needed a seven seater. It was, mm. it was not an option. And so there are not too many out there. But then you have this huge car. We had a uh, Land Rover Discovery. Yeah. It's a big piece of car to haul around a city for eight minutes. Yes. You know, then you park it again. <laughs> so it's, it's not. It is. Um, so it's easier to rent those. In the city, it's fine. You rent those, put them back. It seems to be back. a sort of a, an interesting, uh, I think people are getting their heads around it. Of like yeah. For my usage now, we have a, a small EV, and then mm -hmm. we've got a big estate car, and I've got some sports cars and stuff. But a yeah. small EV... And I live in London, gets used all the time. And that is the yeah. one that makes sense. Like it actually makes yeah. sense to use. I never have to sort of fill it up. It's always charged. And yeah. it just works really well. But we have an expensive big estate car yeah. that never really gets used that much. It's quite comfy. It's quite yeah. good for long journeys, but yeah. often it's just me in the car. So it makes no sense. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone generally, you have this large expensive big vehicle that's yeah. mainly doing short journeys with not very many people in it exactly. it's like it i think it's a difficult one to get around to go in reality for us for sure most of the time renting or borrowing a big car yeah. every now and then would make a lot more sense than uh, just running yeah, small cars the thing is so i gave up the discovery because it broke down yeah the engine and then I took it to the shop and then they're like, oh, it's a French engine. I'm like, guys, you're putting that on the French now after it blew up? It's <laughs> whatever. So I actually loved the car. I was very happy with it. But, you know, obviously with four kids, you know, it yeah. had good usage. But the excuse back then was like, oh, yeah, we, we're going to go to Austria skiing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? And it was like the most horrible trips ever because two of the kids would throw up. And, oh, you know, it's yeah. like, it was never fun, right? It would have been easier, actually, it, less expensive to fly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, when I ran the numbers later, same thing with the actual car. I mean, it's nice to have, you know, the living room on wheels to, yeah. to scoot around. But, um, you know, when you run the numbers, it's like I could rent a car every day. Yeah. Not, not like from six, but, you know, those, the ones on the street. And if I have a longer trip, it's easier to say, oh, I go to six Europe car, whatever. And I'm like, oh, knock yourself out. X5M, yeah. right? I'm like, oh, cool. You know, yep, sounds good. drive it for two days and get rid of it and done with it, right? It's, it's, and it's less expensive in, you know, in my lifestyle yeah. because, you know, in the city, like you say, you just have short trips. Even using taxis less expensive than owning a big estate 100%. car it, my, my numbers huh we um we have some friends that live uh, other side of london and about an hour from us and um yeah. we always had this interesting debate because they up until very recently they didn't drive so if they really? were getting somewhere they might take a taxi or whatever and we yeah. would drive to meet them and there was always this thing of like well we'll drive to them because yeah. they don't have a car yeah. and therefore it's expensive to get to a taxi and my brain immediately was like well this is ridiculous because having a car is expensive <laughs> like it's exactly. much more expensive than getting taxis so exactly. they can get a taxi thank you very much <laughs> 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 yeah but it's and also you know imagine you have repairs you have this you someone have tickets, hits it insurance uh, etc nothing but trouble it is an interesting so one. now we actually have uh, a fiat cinquecento yeah you know, yeah, yeah, fiat yeah five convertible very low monthly payments and the italians interior is nice engine obviously is ridiculous it's like you feel like jumping out and pushing the car <laughs> while you're driving but it's you know it's it's a city it's fine it works. It's, yeah, it's yeah. Fine. yeah it works yeah it's a job uh, it's, 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 i'm interested to see how these things evolve and I, i'm i'm into my car so i like my sports cars but yeah. I'm, I'm very much a right tool in the right situation and i'm very aware yeah. of having the wrong tool in the wrong situation is not great like yeah. When you want to park and you're in a massive vehicle or you just want to go and have a yeah. drink. And yeah. you're like, oh. Try go going on a skiing trip with three kids in your Porsche. Yeah. 
9-11. It doesn't work so good. Not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Right. The um, the, the final question, which I, yeah. uh, I don't know how this one's going to go. Maybe we can do it from a design point of view. Five car garage, unlimited value. Are there any design? Are there any okay. sort of? Well, I, yeah. So I can pick whatever car I a, any anything you like. All right. Okay. So I would definitely DeLorean just to yeah. have it. If I'm gone, in an eighties kit. Um, Range Rover. Yeah. Five? Five cones? Yeah. I mean, these could be five, just to okay, look okay. at. You go, that is such a good just design. Just to look at. They, they, yeah. For most people, it's, well, you're going to drive them and whatever, but <laughs> I know you, you, like, you like design, so. Well, you know, it's like I, um, well, F-Type already said, well, that's not a very special car, right? It's, uh, it, you know, I would like to look at a Jaguar E-Type. I always like yeah. those. I'd never driven one, I couldn't say so. So, but that would be something. Yeah. Then I would throw in something Italian, like a, <laughs> a Lancia, but it's like, you know, <laughs> I'm out of bullets. I, uh, I don't, I'm not a G class guy. I'm not, I don't need to, you know, I like the old defenders, but also. I'm failing you. That's okay. With, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I could give you the Ferraris, Maseratis, yeah, yeah. and all that, but it's um, it's interesting because I was also I like to say I fall in love too easily because we're working on all these cars all yeah. the time. I'm like, oh, it is a cool one. I should get it. They're obviously way too early to order. By the time you can order them, I'm onto something else. Yeah. But uh, but that's interesting. I, that that's the. Maybe the funny thing that I'm a non-car car guy. Yeah. Interesting way to know. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a good, it's a it's a cheaper way of being a car guy. <laughs> it's, it's I like, guess. No, I have friends that collected Ferraris and they're totally into it, but it's, they're almost married to the mechanics. Yeah. You know? It's like, oh, no, I know it. Louis, he knows where to get that yeah, from yeah. there. His and, part and whatever. If you enjoy that, it's awesome. It's uh, It's just not my... Yeah was the cool. my world well well <laughs> thanks very much for coming on the podcast it was it was it was really interesting to talk about yeah cgi thank you very i've not much had a, a good conversation about it so it's good i've learned a lot yeah awesome awesome thank you very much for having me yeah it's been great cheers